Hi, I'm Sandra Clark. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to prepare your warp on a warping board. There are some things we will need to have ready before we get started. So you'll want to have your warping board, your warp yarn, scrap yarn in a different color that's a little longer than the length of the warp that you're wanting to create, at least eight pieces of a scrap yarn that are about 10 inches long or so, an empty coffee can or a similar container, and a pair of scissors. This is your typical warping board. You can see that it is a simple wooden frame with pegs protruding every six inches or so on all four sides. Some of the boards are designed to be 36 inches across so that as you drag your yarn, you can determine the length just by counting how many times you drag your yarn across. That's not always the case though. So you want to be sure that you either have a guide string or know your own board's measurements. This frame can be permanently mounted on the wall, which I highly recommend if you're able to do that. It can also be hung with picture wire or command hanging strips. I prefer the command hanging strips over picture wire because they work like Velcro and allow you to secure all sides to the wall, preventing movement while measuring your warp. I find that if I only hang at the top, then the bottoms are not secure and it gets wobbly. And so I end up having to hold the board with one hand while trying to wind with the other. As for the pegs, they are what we will use to wrap the yarn around the board in order to create multiple yarns of the same length. The more pegs we use, the longer the warp will be. In order to decide how many and which of the pegs we will use, we must first cut a guide string. This string is going to be a little longer than the total length of a single warp thread we want on the loom. Remember, this is not just for the length of the project, but it also includes loom waste. Loom waste are those portions of the warp that you're not able to weave. I will discuss how to calculate warp length as well as the number of threads needed for a project in another video. For now, let's just pretend I'm going to do some sampling. So I just want two yards of warp. I'm going to measure from a yarn that is different from my actual warp, a two yard piece. So that's about a yard for me, one, two, plus about six to 10 inches. This little bit extra is going to give me enough yarn to tie to my beginning and ending pegs without shortening the length of the warp. To put the guide string on your warping board, begin with the left uppermost peg. I usually use a slip knot to tie the string and put over that first peg. Then working towards the right, go over the second peg, under peg three, and then over the very last peg on the top row. You can see that I have marked arrows so that this pattern will not be forgotten. Then you can take your guide string back and forth however you wish, as long as you are only working down. You don't want to wrap from the top down to the bottom and then back somewhere up in the middle crossing your threads. With my short warp, you can see that it works best for me to wrap the top row as I described, then draw across the board from right to left and choose a peg to end at. Now that I am out of length, I will tie my guide string to this last peg. This will now give me the path to follow with my warp yarn. For the purpose of this video, I am going to use rope for my warp yarn. This is way thicker than I would ever really use, but I want to be sure that you can see the nuances of what is happening with the material on the board. When you select your actual warp yarn, you want to be sure that when you pull on it tightly between your hands, you cannot easily break it. I am also going to do this part of the demo, assuming you are going to dress your loom from front to back. Create a slip knot by holding the cut end of the yarn in your left hand. And with your right, take the body of the yarn and wrap it in a loop away from you and then bring it down across over the top of the end in your hand from left to right. Then with your right middle finger, push up a loop from the body of the yarn to create a loop coming out of the center of the first loop. 
grab the new loop with your right index finger and thumb and gently pull as you tighten the knot by pulling the cut end with your left hand. Now, let's take that loop and place it on the uppermost left peg on your warping board. Same place that you started your guide string. The rest of your yarn will go into the coffee can. This will prevent your ball or cone of yarn from rolling around the room as we try to measure. Now, working your way across and down, follow the path of your guide string. When you get to the end, you don't want to end your warp. Instead, your warp is going to go under and then wrap around that peg and follow the same path you came down. But notice the blue arrows that I have on my loom, or on my warping board, excuse me. This time, you want to go up over that and go over the top of all of these end pegs and then down between pegs three and two and under. Then wrap around peg one and follow the initial pink arrows. So here I've got a close up. I have ended one rotation that's going down, wrapping the bottom peg and coming back to the top. If I come to this side here on the initial peg, the very first place we start, I'm gonna take the knot and push it to the back. We're not gonna count that one. That leaves us with one wrap around this peg. Now, if we come over here, you can see the cross. This cross is the most important thing in your warp. You want to make sure to maintain the integrity of this cross at all times, because it's going to take and keep your warp yarns in order, no matter how long or how many warp ends you have. You can also see if we look down a little bit here, this is the guide string. The reason we use this in a different color is so that when we are counting how many wraps around this warp board we have, we don't mistakenly count the guide string as one of our warp yarns. Now there's the rest of this path and we come down to the end. And if I look at the end opposite, of where the yarns come into and away from the peg, I can see that I have one wrap around this peg. I'm going to wrap my yarn around this first peg and let it hang just so that I can show you a couple of things. So as you can see in each of these places, I can count to see how many full rotations I have of my warp, provided I start at the top and end at the top. Here's where it can get a little confusing. One wrap or full rotation is actually equal to two warp ends. If you're not familiar with that term yet, a warp end is a single yarn that goes on your loom from the front, over your breast beam, through the beater, the heddles, and is tied on after the back beam. One full path down and back up gives you two of these warp threads. So when you've completed 20 rotations, you will actually have 40 warp ends. I want to clarify that this is how I count, and you may want to count it differently. Some like to count one on the way down, two on the way up, three on the next strip down, four on the way up, and so on. This way, they are counting each individual warp end. Personally, I find the winding process very meditative and I easily lose track of what number I'm on. It's easier for me to just wind until I feel the need to stop, always at the top, and then choose one of the spots described and count how many rotations I've completed. Now I've given you all three locations that you can count from here, here, and here because Depending on the size of your warp board and where you hang it, it may be easier for you to see one spot over another. 
This way you've got several choices with the same result. Now let's get back to winding this demo rope. I'm going to follow the same path with my pink arrows going down, wind around the bottom and go back up. Sometimes I will count to my, or I will say out loud to myself rather over or under as I approach the cross section. So I'm going under. You'll notice sometimes I have to push my rope towards the wall and I'm going under. Under, over, under. over under and I have come to the end of my rope. Now that I have several rotations, let's take a look at what is happening between pegs two and three. You can see that every other thread is coming down from over peg two to under peg three and then the opposites are coming from over three down under two. This one is down to the left, down to the right, down to the left, down to the right. It's just like interlacing your fingers. And as I said before, this is the most important part of your warp. It seems very simple, but this cross is going to maintain order within your warp ends, no matter how long, no matter how many. When dressing your loom, it is incredibly important to know which yarn comes next. So you'll grab off of the cross. Whatever is on top goes next. If you lose the integrity of this cross, it can be very difficult to recover. I won't say it's impossible because anything's possible if you have time and patience, but it certainly isn't something you want to experience. I have messed up war warps that were far easier to throw away and start over than to try to salvage my mess. If it is hard for you to visualize the importance now, don't worry. You'll have a clearer understanding after watching my video on dressing your loom from front to back, which I have linked in the notes below. Now I have reached the end of my rope, so I am going to go ahead and do another slip knot to tie that at the end here and make sure that I did not lose my cross. You never want to end in the middle, always at the stop top peg. You could end at the bottom peg, but depending on how you thread your loom, if I decide that I want to dress my loom from back to front instead of front to back, I have to have the ending at the top. So I've just gotten into the habit of always doing a full rotation and ending there. So I'm going to tie off at the top peg, leave a cut off the excess, leave a small tail. Now grab your smaller pieces of scrap yarn. This should be a yarn that does not break when you tug on it. Some of your knots are going to be very tight and you don't want the yarn to break while you are securing your warp chain. So the first thing that we want to do is secure the cross. There are different knots that can be used in the process. Different weavers have their own preferences. But what I'm going to do is start with a square knot over this cross right here going horizontally. I'm just going to lay these on my shoulder and pass this yarn from front to back and then from back to front right around that section and I'm going to leave it very loose and do a double knot. Now that is secured. Now we're going to tie the legs of the cross. I'm going to do that with a lark's head knot. I like to do as many knots as possible that are very easy to get out. 
So here I'm going to take and fold my yarn in half. I'm going to feed it from behind, not catching my guide string. Feed that fold through, take the two legs, feed it through the loop and pull. That way it is super easy to take off. Some people like to do bows here. I like to do something that I can just grab that little edge of the fold and pull it off. The easier the knots are to work with, the better. The less cutting with scissors you have to do, the better. The last thing you want to do after you've prepared your warp for a project is to accidentally cut it while you're removing these yarns that are simply there to keep it all organized. So my cross is now completely secure and I forgot to mention that one of the reasons I left this so loose is because I will cut this off but I really don't want to risk cutting the warp. So with this much gap Unless my eyes are just closed, I'm not going to cut that. Now that our cross is secure, let's tie the beginning and the end. This is going to be what is called a choke tie. It is simply a double knot, but we want to make it very tight so the loops that make up the ends can't shift at all. So when we're ready to dress the loom, we can actually cut right through all of these warp ends. So I'm going to pull this forward a little bit slip my yarn in there so it's right next to the peg and do a square knot making it as tight as I can. And now I'm going to do the same at the bottom or at the end peg. Pull that in, slide it up to the side and tighten that as much as I can. Double knot. The last ties are for securing the length of the warp. So if I have a very long warp, I'm going to want to put some security in here so that it doesn't tangle. Usually I use a lark's head knot for this. Again, because it's the easiest to take off. With this one, we really don't need too many because this is very short. Now our warp is complete and it's time to take it off the warping board. So what I'm going to do is start with the bottom and gently pull it off the peg. I can take it all off like this and with one as short as this, I'm going to pull everything off except for the top peg. Usually what I will do is take it off slowly if I have a very long warp. And when I'm taking it off, I'm going to create a chain. To do that, I'm going to treat this warp as one single piece of yarn. And I'm going to create a slip knot like before. So I'm going to hold the end with a choke tie, wrap it around, and then with this loop, I'm going to reach through with my thumb and index finger and grab the body of that yarn and gently pull a loop. This time, however, I am not going to tighten this. I'm going to leave that nice and loose. And then I'm going to take this upper loop, reach through it, and again, grab the body of the yarn and pull another loop. And again, reach through, grab the body of the yarn, and pull another loop. And now, of course, because my length is not very long, it's come off. So with that last loop, I'm going to pull that a little bit longer. And then I'm going to take and match it up with the top where my choke tie is. Now with this last one, I'm going to take this last cut string that I've got and here I will take these 
and I'm going to tie a bow. That way I've got tails that are easy to see, but this is easy to transport from your warping board to your loom, or I put it away temporarily until you're ready to use it. Sometimes I find that I have a very large project and I have to create several of these warp chains before I can actually start threading my loom. So here is the finished test warp chain. Now I'm going to do one more quick demo with an actual weaving yarn to show you an easy way to keep track of how many warp rotations you have created. Here is a 3-2 pearl cotton. If you are measuring out a large number of threads, as I said, you can easily lose track. So I'm going to show you how to mark the warps in three places that we had discussed earlier where we count, show you how to mark them while creating them. You don't need to mark in all three places. Usually I just do mine at the cross, but do it as ever easiest for you. I'm starting with my slip knot at the top. I'm going to work across and create five full rotations following the same path as for the rope. And I'm at the beginning. So I've stopped at the top and now I'm going to show you how I count again and mark with scraps of yarn that are similar in size in a different color. That different color is always so important. I've got my five full rotations and I'm going to take three scraps in extra yarn and I'm going to double check that I have five rotations and then I'm going to show you how to mark them starting with the cross and then at the corners. You can see here that this is my slip knot, so I'm not counting that one. And I have one, two, three, four, five wraps. So we know I have five. If we want to check the other spots just to confirm, one, two, three, four, and five at the bottom. And if we look at the crosses, I've got one, two, three, four, and five crosses. So now that we're confirmed how many we have, that we have the right number we want to bundle together, I'm going to push these together so that they're a little more clustered. It'll be easier to group them with the thread. Okay. And I'm going to start, let's start with the center cross. I'm going to take my scrap of yarn and bring it up and not catch the guide string, but fold it in half over the center of that cross. Okay, and then I'm going to take the front part of that and wrap it behind. And I'm going to let that rest up here on top of the warp board. Now over here, I'm going to take my second marking string and I'm going to go through the warp yarns through the center of my slip knot, fold that in half, and pull it out to the side. That way it's held secure by the peg. With the bottom one, I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to hold that, fold it in half, pull it out to the side, so that it's nice and secure. And the tension of the warp yarn itself is just holding it in place. 
Now that this first bundle of five has been marked, I'm going to go ahead and wind five more rotations. You'll notice that often I will use both of my hands to reach all the way across. That allows me to not only continue winding um, a little more quickly, but I also can take that extra hand and push the yarns closer to the wall or towards the frame of the board. And that's necessary just because as you wind, you work your way out on these pegs until you run yourself out of room. So if you push them back towards the board, then you can easily have more room for more warp. Now let's go back to the sides and I'm gonna check my crosses and check the ends and make sure that I have those five rotations. And I likely have more because I started talking. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So what I'm doing is I actually have six on here. I'm not going to take off the sixth. I'm just gonna pull it forward. So I've got five and then I have this one extra. So I have one, two, three, and I am making sure I grab a down to the left and a down to the right for each time I'm counting. There's my five. Then I'm gonna push my five crosses back and take and drop down the top yarn, and I'm going to pull up the bottom yarn. So now they're crossed again. On the side, I'm gonna do much the same thing. So here I am on the side, I've got my second bundle of five. I'm going to take the pink thread that is closest to the wall, go over the peg, not all the way, it's gonna come out in the middle of these yarns so that I can bring it forward over or behind this cluster. So I've brought that behind that cluster and I'm going to push those close together. And then down at the bottom one, I'm gonna do the same thing. I've got my group of five right here. I'm gonna take this one, reach it between these two so it's under that top part, pull it forward and push them towards the wall. Okay. Now let's wind five more. So I already got one, two, three, four, and five. Ending at five. I'll double check that I have five. One, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Perfect. So again, with this center one, I'm going to go ahead and take the top one and drop it down and the bottom one and bring it up. Very simple. With the sides, let's bring out the five, take the one closest to the wall, go up and over, go under those top threads. Oops. And we want to catch the end here and bring that together. Okay. And at this one here, we'll take the one closest to the wall, put it between the clusters, or my groups of five, and pull it down. Now, the important thing here is you can see I have three little bumps. I've got this one at the end where my nail is. So one, two, and three. At the top, I've got one, two, and three. 
And if we look either under or over the cross, and I snug those a little tighter, you can see I've got three bundles. That is what we're looking for. We're looking for bundles. You can see using this method, we can now just count the bumps for each grouping rather than count each individual wrap. Multiply the number of bumps by the number we decided to group together. In this case, we have three bumps times five rotations within each bundle, which will equal 15 warp rotations. But remember, each rotation represents two warp ends. So you need to take that 15 rotations times two, and that means we actually have 30 warp ends to put on our loom. Thank you so much for joining me for this tutorial on how to prepare a warp with a warping board. Below you can find additional links and timestamps for this video. If you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more tutorials on weaving and other fiber arts. If you have any questions or ideas of what topics you would like to see in the future, please leave those in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you're thinking, and I'm so happy to help with any problems. If you would like to join me for my virtual Friday Night Works in Progress gathering, click the link below. Everyone is welcome. We'll do it on a platform so that everyone can talk and share their current projects. My next video will address how to calculate your warp length, count, and set. So subscribe and stay tuned. Thanks again for your time and happy weaving.